Welcome to the Entrepreneur Podcast, where we take a look inside the lives of the accomplished and successful businessmen and women. We'll get up close and personal with the founders of booming startups. So lean in and prepare to carry away something to skyrocket your own business. Please subscribe to our show and do leave us a review. It means a lot to us. Now, here's your host, Rajiv. Hey, listeners, welcome to the Entrepreneur Talk Show. I'm your host, Rajiv Unikrishnan, and this is the show where we talk about entrepreneurship and speak to great founders, entrepreneurs, and investors. Today, I have with us Ravi Tivedi, founder of Region Capital, Upan Rani, and Push Again. Uh, welcome, Ravi. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Rajiv. Thanks for having me on the show. Thank, just a brief intro. So, Region Capital uh, is focused on building startups and angel investing. Uh, then we have Push Engage, which is a platform for enabling browser push notifications on any website in five minutes. And of course, the focus of today's show will be Coupon Rani, which is an online website that deals with coupons and offers from various online shopping stores to help any online shopper to save on their shopping expense. Uh, Ravi did his MBA from Duke, and prior to the uh, prior to the the about three companies, he worked as a principal at South Southeast uh, Interactive Technology Funds. And before Southeast, he worked uh, as an equity analyst at Bank of America. He's also a mentor for IMA's iAccelerator and uh, the Microsoft Accelerator. Again, uh, Ravi, welcome to the show. Do fill in the gaps, if any, in the intro and do let us know what's going on in your world today. Sure. So, I mean, I think you you gave a good summary. And again, just to crystallize for our listeners, if I haven't confused them enough with a lot of no places I work. So, so I've been an entrepreneur uh, ever since I moved to a venture, you know, career back in the United States. Okay. And uh, in summary, uh, I, I, when I say entrepreneur, I've been associated with entrepreneurs ever since then. And and over time with the venture career, I actually had an opportunity in the U.S. to, in a special scenario, run a, a startup. Okay. And that's where you know I got so excited. And when I moved back, I have this kind of a slightly different structure. So Srijan is like a holding company where you know we take one idea and we execute one at a time and i am the entrepreneur for one of them okay and that's and that's why you see okay so the first one i started was coupon rani and and on to the second one which is you know push engage but at a given time i run one company I want to be in the trenches and so i am like an entrepreneur great great so just to clarify okay so before we move to the business uh any passions outside of work yeah no so i have i'm um, see i'm uh you know within workspace itself I've been a guy who explores a lot of things. For example, in terms of, you know, being a guy who is a techie who wrote a book or from, from there to do business dev or to do finance, m and So I have done many things on the business side as well. Similarly, I have a lot of hobbies. I'll, I'll not bore you, but right now on <laughs> top of my mind is I'm learning piano. My son is actually around eight and a half. So I decided to join him in his journey and just learn alongside with him so that's my new big thing outside work second i've always been a hobbyist when it comes to electronic circuits and again i'm trying to maybe coach him a little bit so gone back to the breadboard and you know doing some uh, electronic projects with okay. making some rope okay. kind of stuff so those are the few things but i have many 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 interesting things i've read okay so moving on to the product coupon rani so what inspired the idea for it yeah, no, great question. So it's around the time when I moved back uh, from the US. It's kind of, it ties in with my personal story. So around 2011 end, I moved back after living in United States for all nine years. Okay. And the idea was, you know, I moved back primarily for reasons. One was personal because, you know, I wanted to support my parents. Second was I wanted to do a startup. And that's where, you know, I started looking around, you know, what are the things a that I can bring to the table? And last that I had with my venture fund, I actually ran an online division of a company that they owned. Mm -hmm. And so I was very hands-on to the extent that I could run a digital marketing for a business. And secondly, uh, when I started, I took some time to explore and look at various things. And that's where we started Srijan. And and initially, I started investing. I still do investments, but that gave me a flavor of what's happening. And I realized that uh, e-commerce was uh, growing rapidly. I wanted an idea that could leverage that growth, but not have any inventory in the model. Got it, got it. I was very passionate about, uh, you know, finding deals, being the deal hunter in the US and otherwise. And this seemed like an interesting play where you can launch a coupon site with a differentiation, uh, come on in and, you know, drive a lot of traffic and, you know, uh, build a business around it. So that's where, you know, Coupon Rani was born. And around July 2012, uh, we actually bought the domain and started the business. Okay. And what would the vision be for the company? So, so uh, to, quite candidly, we wanted to build something which was a top three or top five in the category. 
and the other portion of you know the vision was especially that consumers uh, they get frustrated when they're looking for coupons for two reasons we found one was either the coupon would not be working and somebody was just spamming them and saying you know 90% off when there wasn't such a deal and second was uh, most people were not testing and checking the coupons and giving enough exhaustion so we wanted to solve that pain point and get the shoppers happy yeah. and and se- secondly like i said we wanted to be top 5 and thirdly we we knew as i mean this is the overarching goal as srijan capital was we wanted to build a cash business you know uh, for our uh, what is called so my vision for srijan has been we have a cash business and i have openly talked about it and that cash business and later can take you know help me take bigger risks Correct. build a cash business get the cash uh, coming in so that now i can take more high risk high return so this was kind of the anchor if you may for srijan capital coupon rani so this was going to be that cash business we started okay got it and so okay, let's build it as a cash flow so the reason why i bring it up is uh, the way you build a cash flow business versus the way you will build a you know a super high growth maybe uh, in red is slightly different but we wanted to build again that's why organically the right way and you know where over time after some time we were generating okay. good cash okay. flow businesses so in terms of uh, coupon rani i mean uh, when you thought of the idea was it only you to bring this to a reality or you had any co-founder so um, i mean fortunately uh, unfortunately i did not get enough folks when i moved back see when i started i was you know in 2012 i was around uh, 36 years old right mm-hmm. and so what happens at that age the, the further along you know you i did not have anybody but i had some very good folks who joined in as an employee number 1 kind of are like partners and okay. when i say kind of except the name not being co-founder we have you know very simple i would say profit share or in some cases equity where they are you know part of so i had two folks one from the technology side and one on the business side again sai sarkar who now is a general manager Correct. who actually were early in helping out but uh, i mean yeah okay and so when you thought of the idea uh, how did you validate it uh, any mvp or did you just straight away launch the site no so actually i had seen uh, let's put it this way so having seen uh, several you know startups like in the us retail me not which is a large one and actually in india i had seen couple of startups it, it's actually interesting that around a year back i had seen a startup for investment in the same space in the couponing space okay right? okay where i was still investing so i had done the groundwork i was very bullish for some reasons the investment did not take place because the founder did not uh, raise a professional round he raised a friends round and, mm-hmm. and so we did not participate uh, and, and so having done the research it, that research portion was kind of taken care uh, but for me it was more around okay is this that i want to do for next 5 year or 10 year Uh, is this my strength is this something that will make me happy waking up and that's where you know we said okay fine now and so then we jumped so the day i mentioned july that's when we jumped but probably we did research for last two prior to that okay so in terms of the site uh, is it a simple search and discover site yeah so what we offer is yeah so it's a, so you're right it's a simple search and discover you search for coupons you land on our site but things which are slightly different and again at surface it may seem you know very trivial yeah, but yeah. when you get into the trenches that's the hard part one is we make sure that our coupons get tested almost every day so the user who uses them gets their satisfaction it's, okay it's probably very boring it's very cumbersome but that's actually gets the experience number two what we do is we try to have the breadth store so when i say breadth i mean i want to have all the merchants which are out there so right now i have close to 3500 merchants listed on my website yeah, yeah. which means any online site and which is unlike several sites because most people will focus on where they can get commission right? correct, correct. but the consumer does not think from commission he is like hey you know what i want to get a coupon for indigo maybe indigo doesn't give any commission but if they come they will find something so those are the few aspects we wanted to build for the consumer that actually you know we we we, may, we, we thought it's big enough the third was we wanted to target local language so we launched a hindi site yeah yeah fourth was we came up with an api for business partner which is doing well as well so for example we see lot of mobile recharge companies bundling coupons and it was happening so we said you know if you want to launch a mobile recharge company but don't want to get the deals and others you can take an api from us so those are the four few things which are different there are many other differentiators as well but when we started we wanted to give a better experience and that's where we okay okay so do you all only aggregate or also have a uh... merchants putting up uh, coupons directly on the site so the, all models are there so we okay. have actually a merchant panel where uh, a, a direct uh, merchant whom we tie up with 
actually uh, can log in and and kind of upload it their merchant mm-hmm. and then our editorial team will you know validate it we, we can you know get uh, through emails so all the all of the methods are there uh, but but we have a panel for our merchant got it got it and so reading about your growth uh, you have around 3 and 1/2 uh, 1000 merchant listings 16000 plus coupons uh, approximately and around 300 exclusive coupons and you are like, getting close to what 1 million visits a month or is it more correct okay great. yeah so it varies so, yeah. so i would say last year maybe i got even higher you know uh, is is just that i mean again this month will be higher so we have got anywhere between 600000 to 1.5 million visitors a month and that actually uh, places us among the top 3 or top 4 site in india and uh, actually uh, yeah and, and so 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 one thing on that i will also mention is that in this model eventually it's about getting traffic right correct correct, correct. And, uh, you can have as much differentiation and stickiness but the first thing is about getting traffic and and we were immensely focused on that in the beginning and that's where you know whatever strength or knowledge i had around okay digital marketing that came to you and, and i actually by the way on a separate note i do speak a lot on what i call as growth hacking or what i call as right. okay. how to acquire users for cheap and you can check on sridhan capital oils where in a year i would have done maybe 20 seminars or 30 so that's the kind of and all there what i'm doing there is just sharing some of the things yeah, that we yeah. have so for us i think the differentiation in building this company was around a product b was around finding those marketing methods we which you know a bootstrap company like ours could employ Correct. deploy and get customer okay. it's still the boot, uh, the the growth hack by the way does not mean it's zero cost there is a cost there is, except yeah. that it is such that that i acquire at 10 times more efficiently than let's say a large company who is doing large media buys okay And so now you're also in Malaysia, if I understand correctly, right? That's correct. That's okay. correct. So we have a site called Coupon Belanja. Ah, uh, which okay, okay. Which serves Malaysian market. Again, it's named after the local names. That's correct. And that's with uh, tying up with someone, or it's again on your own? No, uh, again, it's totally us. So the, the so the we, the way we think about tie ups is you could build us. So there are two specific models in this space. Yeah. One is around B two B, which is you you build it and then you have a tie up where somebody sub hosts it. we have been mostly around the direct model which is b2c because that's where we think our strength is and so it's again direct model uh, consumers in malaysia search for it and find it and come and they actually get a coup okay. so in terms of tie ups what we do on the other side which is with the merchants right so yeah, of course we try to do more tie ups and try to see if we can get at least one exclusive coupon on my platform so people can remember that i got this extra which was not there anywhere mm-hmm. that's a key part so those types are like with amazon flipkart snapdeal it's paytm etc okay got exactly. it got it yeah so and some of them are actually i would say that some of those tie ups are getting expensive hard but for example for that thing that you mentioned amazon there have been times when amazon has done exclusive coupons in india okay. and we have got you know those coupons on our platform we were among the few who got chosen to you know have those is what that's i would say so that's the thing right once yeah. you get scale you are able to you know uh, get exclusivity in some very good coupons and platform so in terms of revenue model it's simple uh, your know, url gets tracked and the merchant pays you yeah so revenue model is straight forward it is what we call as affiliate or a commission based model yeah. a user comes uh, goes to the merchant site buys a product and for every product that get purchased and delivered you know we get a revenue share okay and apart from that the only other model that is exists is some amount of advertising which could be either adsense or any direct a media buys we may sell but that's not the significant the significant portion always is you know around this uh, revenue share okay. commission and so your coupons are all for online stores only that's correct okay. we made a call we have seen i mean you will see a mix of sites some doing offline as well correct correct but we made a call that we will do online stores only because offline economics are very different requires a large amount of capital and there are some other you know wants is to it and we may we wanted to stay focused and do much better here so i can do you know 3600 or 4000 store listing in you know few months as opposed to doing only 2000 online and like 10000 okay so so i think your traffic uh, numbers because of that you have been able to stay above the competition right primarily yeah okay yeah that's that's the game yeah. you in, in any consumer business if you get traffic you survive okay it's all about traffic got it absolutely And so you're currently still bootstrapped, or you're getting revenues. You're not going for any funding, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so once uh, you reach certain critical uh, size in this market, you can generate enough cash to you know fund your growth. Okay. And so I would say the first year uh, or so, you know, I kind of funded it 
the capital kind of that's where i will call my bootstrap money okay suppose that it's all self funded got it so it's try whatever revenues we generate is more than enough to cover the expenses and whatever extra we get we put it in the growth like we did the malaysia okay and just uh, to let our listeners know can you tell us a little bit about activities at region and also the push engage product sure sure why not so in region it's kind of like i said in the beginning it's like a holding company which i have which does two thing one is that it uh, i run one startup out of that and the other is by do angel investment so so far in you know every year i do around one or two investments i have around seven so far in the last you know four years i made it mm-hmm. but again there i act as an individual angel i am not a institutional investor so so the check sizes are small you know but i am always a part of a consortium whether it is you know let's venture or whether it is india angel network okay. or angel network but again you know uh, a part of that group and then we invest so that's kind of the the reason i do uh, angel investing is a like i was a venture investor in the us and i want to continue with that because i think over time it's been almost now 8 years i've been investing in startups i want to continue that also it helps me understand many sectors in india by by being an investor also i love to actually learn from my startup founders they are kind of my mentors in some of the best practices even though i may mentor them in some things right yeah, yeah. so so I, it's kind of funny i'll say for example one of our startup is venture city which i funded so we actually got selected for a, a nascom inotrek we selects the best product right. startups push engage like you know 3 months back and even though we were only few and it was funny that venture city also got selected so it was you know one of my investment <laughs> okay so we were all ball bouncing so that's the reason i was saying that now uh, coming to the second uh, product that push engage so push engage is a saas product uh, which actually enables browser push notifications on on any website just like how facebook is sending notification to get users back correct it is extremely useful to get more uh, in terms of getting more traffic it's a very new channel because chrome and firefox just announced support yeah, and yeah. in that space uh, we are among the leaders we are among the top 4 in the world in that push engage is live in 115 countries with around 4200 plus websites and the use case there is just like you use email uh, to get users back now you can use this channel and this actually uh, which is browser push is performing much higher so so that's the use case so in fact for even for your website or any content yeah, site yeah. I was just going to say it. that I think I'm going to try it out why not Yeah absolutely yeah. I mean in fact uh, we get that lot of time and for content sites I have seen high level they driving 10 to 30% extra traffic oh, whatever okay. the traffic number is just using that and it's basically your customer who's see the problem which content site has is you will get a customer once 80% or 70% is not going to come back Correct. So what do you do? get that user back he was your user who remembers you so there are three things you can do one is you can collect email but the email opt ins are much lower because you have to type in yeah, and yeah. people may not trust you here it's a single click opt in and push browser push so your opt ins are higher second is retargeting which obviously means you have to pay some money to you know google or facebook to retargeting so th- so across these three channels which is browser push email and retargeting this is become you know the far superior channel in terms of re engagement it's a new channel it's only six uh, i mean now it's only 10 months old in some sense and the hype cycle has still not hit so i think within next 2 3 years you'll start seeing lot more okay. people do it right. and a tool like push engage will so. okay so you've been in so many startups and of course have your own funding company also so what are the challenges you've seen over time in the startup community in india see there are several i i will see i i would say even though i do some investments i will still categorize myself as 90% entrepreneur so what i see is no different than in fact our office is not swanky at all it is like a bootstrap startup so there is no difference at all i mean just want to make that clear so that people don't you know <laughs> yeah. think of because it, it, there is a difference when let's say you have a million dollar and you do things right correct right? correct but i mean i am in a I, the reason i am also somewhat of an investor is because i never invested in buying a house i didn't get locked into the emi business if i got into the emi I'd probably be happy with a house but then looking out for other investors that's the only difference i will say now coming to a question on challenges there are several of them number one begins is like you were asking did you get a co-founder so that becomes a challenge around that the second one is how do you get employees how do you get people to get excited about your vision when you don't have a lot of money yeah. and when you are just starting up so that becomes one one challenge that you face and it's constantly there even when you grow how do you retain your employees how do you make them you know happy and it's also 
uh, not only happiness, but they should see the growth in there. But remember, when you do a startup, there would be good days and the bad days. And the thing is, when you are going through a rough patch, how do you not get people yeah. deep? Yeah. Right. So that's the first one. Second is when you have very limited resources. This is where all the innovation stuff comes in. You have, let's say, I'm running a marketing campaign. I have a budget of only one lakh rupees, and I know, for example, my competitor he has around ten lakhs. Now, how do I compete with a ten lakh budget? Of course, the easy answer is, hey, we can't. But then that's not how we build startups, right? So, so that's kind of telling folks, you know, that they have still power and 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 they can do it. I mean, our budget is still not zero, but the point is, is that how do you, you know, compete with the large? Uh, and, and that's where all the innovation, all our stuff that actually has made us execute so much better has come. You know, whether it is, you know, whatever tactics. So that's the second one I would say challenge. Third is, you know, the, the bootstrap life is extremely hard. I mean, I will not, I've been doing it for now four years now. It's extremely hard. Mm. I mean, if if you, even though I've been an investor on the other side, I know if you raise money, you know, so much changes. But I also feel that brings in a lot of discipline a bootstrap life, you know, because you're not splurging. And, and and that actually brings a lot of innovation in there. But it's a hard life. Here. A startup, you know, while glorified in the trenches is extremely hard. Yeah, That's yeah what I very say. true. Okay. So moving out of product, uh, who over time has uh, influenced you most in life? Uh, who has influenced you, I think? Yeah. yeah. See, uh, uh, it's, a, it's a very broad question. So I will begin by saying, uh, you see, I've always got uh, fascinated with folks who were multifaceted and who did many things. Yeah. And in, in that sense, you know, I pursued a career. So out back in, I'll tell you a little more of my story. Back in the 20s, when I graduated out of you know, Indian Institute of Science, where I did a master's in computer science, mm-hmm. I already thought that, you know, I want to do a startup. But, you know, my vision at that point was, you know, a startup, I need to know a couple of functions. So I better go and work somewhere. So I joined Hewlett Packard, started off as a software engineer, uh, started to do much better. In fact, at that time, I wrote a book, on uh, okay. web services yeah, yeah. i was part of some standard bodies i got to do some cutting edge work but what i realized post doing all that was despite that we had our set of failures that technology is not a silver bullet and and it was all about understanding what the business's pain points were and that made me actually switch to a business development and a pre sales line i i was actually managed to do that switch before, without an mba which was very hard yeah. i did that for a few years ran it and then you know i felt i better get an mba to kind of get this side pushed. so i did that then post mba i kind of decided uh, i mean during mba days i realized that finance was such a good interesting stuff in my passion mm-hmm. uh, or rather i was so uh, numbers oriented that i decided to pursue a wall street career so i was a stock analyst for bank of america post my mba mm-hmm. all of the so my mba was at duke which was a us yep. university right, right now bank top so i ended up doing that again there over time i realized that great lot of you know you probably end up making a lot of money but in terms of my satisfaction i was more looking for longer term horizon investing so when i moved to a venture capital career back okay. in eight I did that for a few years. Again, the, uh, the idea I'm saying is I've kind of shaped my journey. I've followed where my passion is. Correct. Did the venture c- career gig. The special scenario came in where they said, hey, this is the online division of our company, which was large. By the way, it was a hundred million company. And this online division, uh, do you want to run it? I said, yeah. I mean, so I went in with, you know, the green and, but with a lot of numbers, ran it for two years, turned around. That's where I enjoyed the most. That's where I learned the digital marketing. And I said, you know what? I've been on the fences, always thought, I've got now so many things mm-hmm, that I mm-hmm. you know, digital marketing, finance, tech. Now is high time I start. So I almost feel in hindsight, I should have started 10 years early. But even at 36, I said enough, I will start it. Otherwise, I'll have this regret later in my life that I never did a start. Correct, correct. And so that's where, you know, my journey started. It's kind of very different. So I have had influencers in many shapes and forms. So I have had influence with some of the VCs in the US whom I kind of work with and, you know, they help me shape, you know, some of my instincts. For example, being an entrepreneur and being able to decide that technology is so important that you should be willing to bet so much. You know, so so and you you should be willing to invest. See, often the, the conflict between yeah. entrepreneur and investor is that entrepreneur may you know may not see the benefit of something that has huge cash. Correct. You know, correct. Correct. So so that's what I kind of learned from some of the VCs whom I worked with. So for then later on in the Indian startup ecosystem, I got influenced by 
several folks like you know Ravi Gorraj, Mukund Mohan. There are couple of you know good uh, entrepreneurs, Pallav Nadani. You know these folks who have kind of done bootstrap startups and have built from scratch, and and they kind of influenced me. I still you know talk to a lot of those folks, and there are several you know other examples out there. So that's kind of a set. I I wish I had a single person like you know, Steve <laughs> no, no. and I could say, but that's not the truth. Okay. So, <laughs> Okay. So and what's the best advice you've been given over time? See in terms of a startup there is only one thing that matters and this is my personal view both from you know venture as well as entrepreneurship which is that persistence space right so if you persist you get more shots at the same problem it's like the ant tries to climb the hill 100 times right so if you don't give up you will succeed that's the only thing i know okay and and assuming you're not in something that is going to die or something <laughs> correct that's it so okay. once you know the field is fine so that's what i kind of stick to even though it is very painful Correct. even in the worst of the times no that's okay. what i was okay okay over time uh, ravi i mean you've been through so many entrepreneurial journeys uh, any time where you just want to completely give up yeah so i think uh, there was one specific time where you know one of my ctos for my company actually kind of quit and it was mainly for personal reasons but that that time we were doing just okay and this is for coupon runny only okay. it was around a year into the journey we were we were doing we were growing but not as fast and he had actually moved from pune and he was doing like the up down thing where his wife and kids were there and he had you know made the commitment that he will move them after a year but then he probably thought that this wasn't going anywhere or it wasn't big enough and and, and you know that's the thing i was saying earlier about perseverance so we didn't give up and he said you know what i'm going to move back but it was a big setup because you know, eventually i believe you know technology or product is a key portion for any company including coupon rani of course and so that was a big setback and kind of made me also evaluate was it was i in it full and also like i earlier said given my opportunity cost given what i could do is it big enough but then i kind of decided to persist and said okay just fight on and you know, get some more folks in there and And, and just continue the journey and then eventually it paid off so okay. I'm, i'm glad i didn't give Great. up and in terms of uh, like at present uh, anything new or any new feature coming up that's getting you and the team really excited yeah no i think on the coupon rani side i think we have done several things on the ui side in fact one of the things which i do want to sh- share uh, which is kind of related is that the fact that the push engage company started actually started from coupon itself oh, okay. so we actually had built this tool for our uh, usage at coupon rani and at that time there was wasn't anybody who had built a browser push notification tool like a saas tool and this was just a new technology but remember like we said we always look for this hacks or new channels this was a new marketing channel and we built the tool i saw the returns and i said hey over email it was performing 5 10x better and that we said you know what makes sense to So, so similar to that so again so in some sense there are some marketing ideas which may maybe lead into some spin off and something that is one set of course internally we continue to do some more work on you know improving the accuracy of the coupons that we have even right. though we have done a lot what can we do on a, a automated and semi automated manner and that's where you know we spend a lot of time apart from the user experience and you know matching the coupon to the right thing for example you may be looking for a jeans but then which is the best coupon for jeans is still a very hard problem correct that nobody has actually solved in some sense accurately so we so some of those we kind of work on and we hope to you know make some good breakthroughs on those okay great and where do you see yourself and your business in the next 2 uh, to 3 years see in terms of coupon rani we think we'll continue to be the top 4 or 5 maybe go off few notches higher maybe traffic wise should be 3 4x higher and and continue to lead the industry uh i would also think that um, other things like a price comparison you know, could could come about um, i mean from a product side i mean in terms of uh, revenue or otherwise i think we should see 3 to 5x more growth in this business and overall for me personally uh, now that i have been also looking at a saas business i hope that mm-hmm. business also grows up and and can be sizable mm-hmm. business great all the best so uh, again and we come to a part of the show which is a quick fire round simple yeah. brief answers so when people ask you what do you do how do you answer that i am an entrepreneur okay <laughs> startups when you think of the word successful who is the first person that comes to mind when i okay uh, successful mm, a good a good one but i don't have uh, okay let, let me take a step so 
I, usually a sports person's name would come to my mind okay. when I think successful. Okay. What do you excel at that people might not realize? Uh, that may, they may not realize. Okay. So I believe I excel in the ability to endure pain. Okay. Just, and, and the ability to learn anything. Okay. That's, whether it is marketing and that's kind of a mindset I have that I'm not afraid to Great. learn anything out okay. there. And what is something that you believe in that other people think is insane? That I believe in that other people don't think is true. Is that it? people think, other people think is insane. Is insane. <laughs> <laughs> so, so uh, okay, so I have this belief again, like maybe you're asking a tough one, but I have this belief in being able to do some bit of handwriting analysis and actually uh, uh, being a part of a salesperson, being able to, you know, understand uh, what yeah. are some uh, thoughts a person has while he's sitting in front of me, which I think people think. Okay, is. great. And what, what would you say is your greatest weakness? My greatest weakness at times is that I trust people too quickly. Okay. And uh, sometimes I take too much risk in giving them uh, things that they have never done, but I believe they could if they wanted. Okay. M commerce or e commerce? Uh, I would say I take both. Okay. I, not either or question. It depends on where the customer okay. wants to be. I mean, the, the obvious answer is it'll be more M, but I am not a you know stickler. Correct, what, correct. And your favorite city globally? Oh, <laughs> I would say New York. Oh. That's where I've lived. I've lived in like six cities in the last uh, 12 years uh-huh. and New York is the best. I Great. love New York. Even over LA. <laughs> Finally. Bank, Bank. Oh no, New York is, def- New York is definitely the best. Past, I feel. <laughs> yeah. And any last uh, thought or piece of advice that you may have li- missed that you want to give our listeners? So I probably said that, but I'll say that again. Startup journey is hard for the weak hearted. But once you get on it, persist. Keep trying, never give up, and I'm sure you'll succeed. Great. Please let, let our listeners know how they can reach you and also uh, Coupon Rani. And, sure. sh- and Shijan Capital for that matter. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, the best way to reach me, I'm on Twitter at Trivedi Ravi. Okay. If you want my email, it's uh, ravi at srijancapital.com or ravi at couponrani.com or ravi at proshengage.com. Uh, <clears throat> best way is, like I said, Twitter. Uh, again, I'm happy to help any entrepreneurs out there. I'm happy to help specifically on uh, customer acquisition because that's what I love, you know, solving for any business or anything else you can, you know, uh, looking forward to. Great. And, and we have a set of exclusive coupons on couponrani, couponrani.com slash exclusive, which I think you all should check out and, you know, save some money while shopping. Great. Again, Ravi, thanks for taking the time to talk to us and inspiring our listeners to start their own ventures and all the very best at building and scaling Couponrani, Push Engage and Shredan. Thank you so much. Thanks, Rajiv. All right. Do visit couponrunny.com and visit us at theasianentrepreneur.com to get the show notes and please subscribe to our show on all the platforms and leave a review on your thoughts about the show. Thank you. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to the show so you don't miss an episode. In the meantime, head over to theasianentrepreneur.com and check out show notes and other information to motivate you in your entrepreneurial endeavors.